I am on a mission to find the best dividend ETFs. And I'm not talking about the ones that yield 3 to 4%. I'm talking about high yielding dividend ETFs, ones that will make you a lot of money in the long term and won't lose value in your portfolio. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm glad you're here today. Today, we are talking about three different high yielding dividend ETFs, two that I'm you've probably heard of and one that I guarantee you haven't that was called out by a person in the comments on YouTube. So I appreciate it when you guys drop comments on different stocks and ETFs that you like. So we're gonna talk about these three. We're gonna compare them a little bit and talk about why I like all of them so much. So I hope you enjoy. If you do, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's jump straight to the first one that has a near 14% dividend yield. First one is a tough fun ticker QQQI. And I say tough because it pays monthly and it has an over 14% dividend yield or distribution rate, rate, whichever you'd like to use. Now, the reason I like these NEOs funds is this one also has a sister fund, SPYI, that has been performing really well. It is on SPY, whereas this one is on the NASDAQ. Now, a little disclaimer for you guys. This is not financial advice. The reason I'm making this video is to talk about funds that I personally like. I own two of the three, and I'm going to give you some reasoning as to why and what I look for when I'm looking for a high-yielding ETF, because I have some very, very strong parameters. I don't just simply buy anything that has a high yield. I have to be convinced. Uh, so to speak. So when it comes to this newer fund, this one is higher risk. We've seen it only trading for what, six months? It started trading in January, so seven months, nearly seven months. And again, the reason I like this, it's got a really high yield. I love reinvesting the monthly dividends. I love being notified of my monthly dividends and I like the NASDAQ 100. So we're gonna take a look into this fund a little bit more, look into the NEOS website and see what they brag about this fund and that'll give you more of an idea of why I like this one so much. So let's do that right now. So I'm not going to talk too much about QQQI because I've talked about it a lot and if you're interested just check out the other videos that I'll link down below. But I want to hit the main points. I'm looking for monthly distributions, looking for a good solid dividend yield. I want a low expense ratio and I want to know the assets under management. How much money do they have in the fund to make more money for shareholders? So there are some other perks when it comes to QQQ, um, which we'll talk about on the fact sheet, some tax benefits and stuff of that sort. But we can see we have monthly, we have a 14.48% dividend yield and an expense ratio of 6.68%. Now, this is not a high, it's a higher expense ratio. It's not the highest I've seen. I've seen ones getting into the 1%, but this is an actively managed fund. So you have to pay someone to write these call options. So that is what this money is going to. It's going to the fund itself. It's going to the management. It's going to the company that owns these funds. So it's going to NEOS. So if you invest $10,000, you're only paying about $70 a year, even a little bit under that, which you might think $70 is nothing, but it is important. It's really, really important that you add up all these differences. I invest in a tax exempt account. If you're not, you need to factor in the taxes you're going to pay on the short term gains on these distributions and factor that in with the expense ratio and compare it to your overall return to see if this is better than simply just owning QQQ. Now, I like this because I like reinvesting the dividends right away, and that helps me grow my portfolio more. And since I'm in a tax exempt account, taxes don't matter to me. If taxes were a bigger factor, then it would be something I look at, but they're not for me personally, but you, it may be. So the net assets is about $370 million. And it's funny, but I'm gonna say that's not huge. Um, it's respectable. I mean, if I had 370, I'd be pumped. But as you know, a, an ETF standpoint, it could be a little bit higher. So the important thing as well is to make sure this number is not decreasing. That is where your money ends up missing. If this fund continues to downtrend um, and the net assets shrink, that's what you need to be watching out for. So looking at the fact sheet really quickly, we can see everything I've spoken about already. Like I said, they're looking for high monthly income generation, which I like. Tax efficiency, which is important. Potentially lower vo uh, volatility and very, there's very professional people working. They talk about a lot of the um, portfolio management team and you can come and look 15 years of experience, 25 years, 23 years, but you can lie about that. You can see the top holdings and these will change because it is actively managed. But all in all, I think this is a solid fund. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna look at the dividends or distributions and see how much money it's actually been making investors. So looking at the dividend history, 
I'm going to do some calculations here with you guys because I want everyone to understand how I talk about these numbers and where I'm getting these numbers from. So, so far they've paid out six dividends, six distributions, roughly around 60 cents each, some 59, some 62 cents, which is great, which is phenomenal. You might think, oh, 62 cents, that's not a lot. That's every single month. So it really does add up for one share. You're getting 62 cents every single month. So I'm going to pull up the calculator. We're going to talk about this and how I calculate the yield. So we know that we have six distributions so far and every year we will get 12. So I added them up. Seeking Alpha also does, but my number is the same. It's $3.63. And we're going to multiply that number by two because we've only had six months. So we're going to estimate it's going to be roughly the same. And that'll give us a 12 month return of $7.26. Now you might say, I don't know how to calculate a yield. And it, it's rather simple. We're going to take the anticipated one year payout and we're going to divide it by the current price, which is $49.11. That gets us to 14.7. And then we're going to multiply this by 100 to turn it into a percentage. So now we are getting paid roughly 14.7% uh, in distributions, which is phenomenal. This is really, really high. If you're new to dividend investing, it might not seem very high with the yield max funds that we've seen, you know, over a hundred percent, but for consistency terms, this is one that can be managed relatively consistently. And that's why I like it. This is still higher risk. If you think about it, or if you're a bit of a dividend historian, funds used to be less than like 6%. Like if you got above seven or 8%, you were looking like everyone was saying, Oh, this will never last. It can't continue that dividend. And now they're doing it. And so I think it's phenomenal. I think the new ETFs and pushing forward with new tech uh, is phenomenal for investors overall. But back to QQQI, that's why I love this fund. It's a 14.7% dividend. And here's the thing, even if the price remains constant, getting a 14% return on your money every single year is more than enough for me. I don't need this to also run 10%. It could very well do that over the time span, but I don't need it to. Um, so it is really important also to think about the downsides. We haven't seen this fund perform in a down market that would definitely hinder it. So you always need to check those things. So what we're going to do now, we're going to jump into our next fund, which is one of the more popular ones, but not the most popular ticker J E P Q by J P Morgan. Starting off, just looking at the chart for J E P Q. It's stunning. We're up 7% in the past year. And you might think 7% is nothing. The S&P 500 is up 22%. Well, this is 7% on top of dividends. So you have to remember that. It's very, very important. We can see a few key metrics here. This thing's been trading since May 6th of 2022. Still relatively young. But when you compare it to JEPI, I think this one has a bit more growth potential. JEPI was so popular when it came out. Everybody was buying it. It was like the second most purchased ETF of what, 2022, 2023? Only behind SCHD. So I think JEPQ could follow this and be a more consistent gainer over time. We're going to take a look at the JP Morgan website and find out why I like this company and this fund so much. Right off the bat, the number one reason I really am a fan of this is because it's JP Morgan. And I know people might say, oh, that's not smart to just love a, a ETF because of the company, because it could always go under. But it is something that I think is worth noting. Um, I'm definitely not owning it just because it's JP Morgan. I'm owning it because of a number of factors, as well as the fact that it's a JP Morgan fund. I mean, JP Morgan is one of the most well-known financial institutions. So I think it's worth it. Now, what we're looking at is a year-to-date return of 11.22%, which is pretty phenomenal. And the expense ratio right here of 0.35%. So this is half of what QQQI um, is. So really, really important. And then we're going to look for the assets under management. We'll jump into the fact sheet and see what we can find. You can see the nav. I don't love the JP Morgan fact sheets nearly as much. Value of investments right here, $15.1 billion. Another bonus uh, to this fund and why it's owned by JP Morgan. JP Morgan has a lot of money. So you're talking about what? Less than 400,000 in QQQI compared to $15 billion. Big, big difference. And you know what they say? The more money you have, the more money you can make, which isn't the best saying I would say for these ETFs, but it is important to note. And I do love that that expense ratio is lower. Now we can see market returns. They're showing it here. 
uh, three month 4.87, year to date 15.5, and one year is 26.4. It's up 16.88% uh, since launch. So this is where they're factoring in the dividends that are paid out. I'm not sure if they're doing the drip for every month, but that is an important thing to note as well because this one does pay monthly. I just, I love getting that check. It's not a real check, but I love getting the notification your dividend has been received and then boom, your dividend has uh, been repurchased into the fund itself. That's not the right term for it, but I love that. And so I'm, I don't have as much reason to like uh, JEPQ when we compare it to QQQI just because um, I'm such a QQQI fanboy, but I do think that it is important to think about these things. So you can see the yield is a 9.56%. It's higher than a lot of other things. The bonds are 4%. You can get a 5% high yield savings account. So I would never do anything under 5%. The US high yield is 7.7, .7, which is decent. Um, but still, JEPQ comes out on top. When JEPI first started, it was even higher. It was like 11 or 12% dividend. And JEPQ has been pretty consistent. But let's take a look at the dividend history and see just how consistent this one has been. You can see these dividends have, they've paid out a lot more than QQQ because it's paying monthly. It's been around for a bit longer. And so what? Yes, 2022 is when this one started trading. So maybe, uh, maybe JEPI was 2021. That seems so long ago. So we can see all of these dividends roughly around 40 cents, sometimes dips down to the 35, sometimes up to the 45, but relatively consistent. It's not as consistent as QQQI has been, but again, this is an older fund. So we go to their dividend scorecard. They have low growth. It says a yield of a little over 9% and the annual payout is $4.92. So we're going to jump back to our dividend history. I'm going to pull up the trustee calculator and we are going to do, I forgot the number completely, 492. Let me double check, 492. And we're going to, that's for the full year already. So 4.92 because this one has more dividend history divided by the 52.48 and we get 0.093, multiply that by 100, 9.375. So a 9.4% dividend yield and some relatively consistent gains overall in the price appreciation as we see here. So if you're talking about a 9% return plus a 7% return that we've seen over the past six months, you're looking at again, a 15% yield. It's not a dividend yield, it's a 15% return, which is amazing, absolutely amazing. So I think this one is definitely worth your attention. If you, if you don't own it, I've been tracking this one. It's been performing really, really well. This one I actually put into the 1K dividend account challenge where I invested $1,000 into these different dividend stocks. But still, I mean, that's how I really found about it. And then I, I found out about it. And that's how I saw it performing well. Now for our third and final ETF that I guarantee you haven't heard of because this is the first time I've heard about it. Like I said, uh, someone put it in the comments, which I appreciate. Um, this is a very interesting strategy. It's different than these other ETFs and the yield is pretty amazing. Now, I don't know too much about this one. It's it's new to me as well, but I needed to talk about it. So let's take a look. First looks, we see that this is a SoFi enhanced yield ETF. We are talking about ticker THTA. Now, I love SoFi. I love their banking. I love the SoFi stock itself. I think it's a phenomenal business and I think it's going to do really well in the long term. It's one of the only non-dividend stocks that I actively watch and I'm actively looking to purchase. So I am biased just based off that alone. Um, now the comment said that they actually sell iron condors. So what I'm going to do, we're going to look at their website and get an idea of how they trade and how it's different than these other ETFs and then take a look at the dividend yield, which it is pretty pretty high. So let's jump straight into it. One of the reasons why I love SoFi Bank so much is because I think it's the bank of the future. Um, you can do significantly more online than you can elsewhere. And I hate going into the bank. So that is one reason right off the bat why I like it. We are looking at a distribution rate of about 13%, which is pretty phenomenal. Um, we saw the price action wasn't super significant, but a 13% return is amazing and it pays monthly. Now we'll see exactly what they're trying to do here. And it's an alternative investment, a strategy that takes approach, usually requiring high minimums and reserve for institutions, which is brilliant. 
So it's basically a strategy that most traders wouldn't use themselves. And that can be due to complexity, due to timing, due to a number of reasons. But all in all, they want to generate income. They want to leverage U.S. treasuries and balance a portfolio out. So let's see what they say specifically. This strategy can potentially generate income in a range of market conditions. That's what I love to see. I love funds that can make money in a down market or in a sideways market like we've seen. If the if our stock markets go into a trend where they're literally trading sideways for a year, you have erased a year of your potential gains. Whereas if you're owning something like this, an ETF that can still make money in that time frame, you can continue to recoup all of this money, put it back into the market, and boom. So I think that is really, really important. THTA as a higher yield product from an alternative income to balance their portfolio. Brilliant. Blah, 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 blah. A lot of, lot of information. You can come read through all of this if you'd like. Uh, this is, it's good stuff. And I, I, I like SoFi's website. So I do think it's worth looking into. But I want to point out the main met metrics. We're talking about assets under management. AUM is only 45 million, the smallest of these funds. Uh, expense ratio of 0.5. Again, it's in the middle of the other two funds, but that is a pretty high expense ratio in my opinion. And so, you know, take take what you want from each of these. Like I said, you'll have your own opinion and their your opinions are valid. I completely, you know, I'm not saying that I'm going to live or die by this fund, but there is something I want to note. So SoFi had two other funds that I was a big fan of initially, and those were their weekly paying dividend funds. Now, getting paid weekly dividends is amazing. I have two videos um, that I'll link at the end of this video that are new weekly paying ETFs, which are amazing, but SoFi's were not good. And I'm just going to say that. I got really hyped about them, and the yields were like 2%, and then they both stopped trading. So they were pulled from the market. And so I am a little bit hesitant with this to see how it does. And th so that's why I don't own it yet. It may be something I purchase in the future, or I put in the next 1K dividend account challenge for 2025. But still, this one is probably one of the riskier ones. Now, depending on your investment strategy, I'm okay with higher risk. A lot of people are not. So I, just because of how I invest, I really do think that this fund could do really, really well. And so here's, here's what they do. Up to 90% of the uh, net asset holdings will be invested in credit spreads using the funds techno sorry I don't know what I started reading using the funds holdings of treasury securities as collateral for the funds investment options so I I just think it's it's still very speculative but this one could be amazing and a 13% dividend yield is is phenomenal so if you guys are interested in those weekly dividend funds I will link those at the end of the video. Make sure you click on those if they've been doing really well and I'm super, I, I haven't been excited about a fund like that in a long, long time. Um, and if you want more videos like this on, on REITs, on BDCs, on just all things dividend investing, click the subscribe button, click the like button if you're interested. And if not, I still appreciate you guys for watching this video. You guys have been phenomenal and I just appreciate you guys. I wanna grow and learn and I want us to make money together. So drop some comments. Let me know what you think about these ones if you'd ever own them. And I'll see you in the next video.